Cool. So um, one of my first questions is, you know, this is the end of you guys' tour, and you guys chose Dallas. You got two tour dates here. Why did you guys pick Dallas? Um, I think it just sort of happened that way. So we were we went for the East Coast first, and then the um, second leg of the tour was the West Coast, and so we came to California and then Arizona and New Mexico and ended up in Texas. And and uh, what better way to end up than uh, two nights in Dallas, you know? The city has been fantastic to us. Yeah. You know, been supporting us for years and years and years, so very happy to be here. You guys seem to have some sort of, like, cult following here in Dallas. Oh, yeah. It's very interesting. The last show that I saw, you guys were here, and uh, people were just, like, hugging and singing and sharing their drinks. What yeah. do you think, you know, t despite being Texas natives, what do you guys think makes people in Dallas love you so much? Um... That's a good question. I I, uh, I know that uh, Jesse at the radio station has always helped us out so much, and, and at the edge, and, and um, we also, you know, uh, our fans are good to us because I think we're good to them too. You know, with it, we share with them ourselves, and uh, it's not just Dallas. I mean, it's all over the place, and and um, but um, Dallas is always a good time. You know, we we uh, we're always in Dallas having a great time. I, I'm, trying to form a better answer than that, but uh, it's, it's always hard to describe why our fans come back. You know, I think because they enjoy the music, they enjoy the show, they know they're going to have a great time, they can come and get some shit out, they can, um, they can laugh and cry and scream and yell and mm -hmm. share their drinks or whatever, you know, and, and uh, so um, I think they just know they're going to have a good time, so yeah. they keep coming back. Is there anything uh, in Dallas specifically for you guys that you like to do when you're in town? Uh, we don't really don't have time to do very much of anything. Um, I we used to go down to uh, the Deep Ellum uh, uh, back when we were playing at Trees and and, uh, and Curtain Club and uh, uh, Gypsy Tea Room stuff like that. Uh, I love Deep Sushi. Mm -hmm. It's always a great place to go. Uh, but I haven't been out and about in Dallas in years. Yeah. Been, it's been a while. So. That's yeah. it, though. Well, Deep Sushi's open. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Eagle actually kicking again. Yeah, so yeah. nice, great. nice. The volcano <laughs> roll. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, you guys' last album, it really seems like you guys branched out with your sound. We like, we heard some elements of, like, some non-traditional rapping and some hip-hop and, you know, heavier rock and rock. Is that something we could expect more of on the next Absolutely. album? Absolutely. Uh, we're always, Blue October is always stretching the boundaries um, we if we don't I don't say we change our sound to match the times I think we just met we 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 morph our sound into what we're into mm -hmm. um, and if you know if you don't change and you stay the same then people tend to get a little bored with you uh, every album of ours you know uh, if, you know, we're going to win some and lose some with people that, that's like, oh, well, you changed your sound, it's different now, oh, okay, sorry, you know, that, that's what we do, you know, and, um, and uh, now with, with uh, the influence of the hip-hop beats or with the non-traditional rapping, like you said, um, you know, I've heard that, that people are, some, some would say, oh, well, Justin's trying to rap, well, no, Justin's always had that, that rhythmic lyrical songs, you know, or, uh, lyrics and that, that alliteration and um, now we have the hip-hop beats to it and uh, just something different you know that's the, the place we were in then and uh, you know uh, it's still going to have some of that uh, probably on this next record um, but we're not there yet you know it's not done so we, you, you never know how the novel's going to end until it ends mm -hmm. um, so looking forward to getting in the studio and, and seeing how the song you know how the songs develop and um, you never know. Could be Chinese polka. <laughs> That's some bagpipes or something. You never know. <laughs> that would be very different. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, like like you're saying, the music's always kind of had like that alliteration of vocals, very spoken word poetry, and it's always been really heavy. And something I've always noticed is that the instrumentation really seems to match whatever the vocals are, whatever the lyrics are talking about, which you sometimes don't find a lot in bands. A lot of times it seems like the music is written before the lyrics are. Is like, how do you guys end up matching each other's emotions? Um, well, I can only really speak for myself uh, with the violin and the piano and, you know, the string arrangements and stuff that um, Justin and I have always um, worked closely together um, and trying to influence each other. And 
um, we've been together for so long that, you know, uh, and even the other members in the band, that, that we kind of know where things need to go, you know. Um, Jeremy and Matt match up the bass and the drums, and and um, and that, that comes from where Justin sets out a demo. You know, he has his acoustic guitar and or his electric guitar, and then some beats already made up, and some of the lyrics may um, maybe there. Some sometimes they may they may just be sort of a um, I don't know how to say this in the correct terminology. Um, almost a vowel like wow, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some uh, some some more guttural sounds than lyrics, so you kind of get a sense of the alliteration that he's trying to get to. Mm -hmm. um, so with my string parts, uh, I follow the melody, um, maybe come up with a counter melody, and um, like I said, we've been working for, you know together for so long that it, you kind of know where where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. And um, but that's the fun of it is is also challenging each other and. And uh, Justin will be like, no, you know, try try this a little bit different, or or Matt will come up with something that, that changes the way we think of it on the bass. And uh, Jeremy definitely lays the, the, the heavy drums, and um, so it all comes together quite nicely, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and more surprisingly, sometimes than you would expect, um, you're like, wow, didn't know that that was gonna work, you know, and it, and it comes together. Yeah. Um, uh, I was uh, looking around and I saw that uh, three of the songs from the new album have been already, I guess, named. So, And then one, uh, I think it was Light You Up or Light It Up, was performed already. Are you guys going to be doing any type of road testing? Mm, not live. No. Uh, we've been doing it um, sparsely here, you know, just here and there at, at radio stations just to kind of... Um, you know, test the waters, I guess. Also, see see what you know the reaction and the, you know, um, the other two songs. Um, they have they're always named, but you never know if that's going to be the name of the song. You know, and that's usually because it's a lyrical line that, that's taken from it. You know, mm -hmm. um, but the good the good stuff so far. You know that we have. And, uh, looking forward to to getting into the studio and mm -hmm. watching them grow. Are you guys planning on going in the new year or anytime sooner than that? As soon as we're done, yeah, we're going to take the new year, um, take the holidays off. Uh, we play a show in El Paso for New Year's, and then uh, the second week of uh, January we start up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, in pre-production and rehearsing. And, uh, you know, we're, since, you know, these, these days, with the, the way the recording process has changed and, you know, whether do you go in and make a 13 song CD or do you make a five song EP? And so we're going to try and work on a couple songs, maybe mm -hmm. record those, then go back to the drawing board and work on another couple songs and record those. Yeah. And see and see how to release those from the. Um, I don't really work on that end of it, so <laughs> I just worry about creating my parts. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, um, Blue October has always been known for like your violin work. It's always like. It's almost like a guitar, you know, the, the really interesting thing that you do with it. Are you planning, do you have any, like, new tricks or new sounds that you've been working on that you want to bring to the table? Um, I have, I have, a, I don't know about new tricks. Um, I don't want to say I, I get set in my ways, but I get set in my ways. <laughs> um, I have a, a, a certain technique that I, I always use to record my strings. Um, I would like this time instead of it, um, because back in the old days it was, like say, uh, the answers into consent to treatment, it was more of a singular violin, mm -hmm. and then it grew into string arrangements, and now it's mostly string arrangements, and then a mandolin, and then piano parts on top of it. I really would like to uh, try and do a string arrangement with a lead violin in the middle of it, so to kind of bring the two together, um, you know, when as best as I can describe it. Mm -hmm. um, or to strip it down to just a singular violin sometimes, you know, uh, that, that I haven't, uh, like on Feel Again. So Feel Again had this large string section and then it would come down to the singular, viol singular violin. Um, I'd like to try and do the two of those together at one point. And a couple of songs I have an idea for that, but you never know, like I said, the ideas always change. Yeah, definitely. So, and, but this one, um, there is one song that uh, we're going to try 
making a mandolin symphony. So instead of string you know, violin strings, it'll be mandolin strings. You know, a full string arrangement of mandolins. It's going to be you know, going to be interesting. It, it might be way too much. Do it. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to just do it. You can always take it away. You know. 